Hi everybody, it's Claudia from Create with Claudia. Thanks so much for stopping by. Join me as I delve into my huge box of Island Boutique Ambassador scraps for this month's Working Our Scraps Off. It's episode number 14 and we're doing a little improv sewing. As you can see, I have loads of batik scraps. I am an Island Batik Ambassador, and every month we have to do a project. And so because of that, and I have loads of scraps left over. This is my second year doing it. Um, so I decided this month, instead of uh, use, hitting my other sort of regular uh, scrap fabric bins that I show off every month, I thought I would show you what I have left in my Island Batik and make a project with it. If you're interested in working our scraps off, this is a monthly YouTube series that I do where I bring you a free and easy uh, scrap fabric project. It could be blocks, it could be a little mini quilt, it could be a table runner, uh, you name it, we've done it. I'm always looking for ideas, so if you have a good idea for a project, go ahead and drop me a line in the comments. I, I love that. I also have a really active Facebook group. It's called Working Our Scraps Off, and lots of people post all kinds of really pretty scrappy projects they're working on. Sometimes they're, they're copies of what I've done here, and that's why I like to bring you these projects, so people can use up all of those scraps that, as a quilter and sewist, I know most of us have. Um, so. Let's get started. I'm going to put this huge box aside so you can actually see me and I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit and we will be doing some improv quilt blocks. So out of that big box I showed you, I went ahead and pulled out some purple scraps. Uh, I love this. these colors. They're all pretty similar. They're sort of the same family, but they all have different patterns, which I really love too. A couple years ago I did a video and it's still one of my most popular videos. I believe it's my number five or four most watched videos. It's called Creating Yardage from Fabric Scraps. And basically, I take sort of like colors and make yards of fabric, maybe one yard or so, and you can just keep building on this. This is a little bit like that. It's not quite like that because today I'm using strips. In that video, I use all kinds of odd shapes. It's like crumb quilting, basically, but using the same color. So you can transform that into something else, like I made a quilt with it, I've made a stuffed animal, that kind of thing. But these are my strips, and, uh, well, they're not, not all of them are strips yet, but I'm going to show you how to make one of these blocks. Let me just show you one of the blocks that I've already done. I've already started this project just because I want to make a nice, maybe a double-sized quilt out of it. So here's one that I did. This is all in purples, of course, in stri strips. Very easy, and I'm going to show you now how to make this. There's no set pattern, There's no. there are no set measurements. The only thing that I determine before I start this is how big I want my square to be, or my block. In my case, I'm making nine and a half inch blocks. So, let's get started with these scraps. So to do this, you're gonna need a ruler, uh, a rotary cutter, excuse me, and you're gonna need a ruler later. You don't really need it right now. The only thing you're gonna wanna make sure of is that your strips or pieces of fabric are long enough for your block. So like I said, we're making a uh, nine and a half inch block and I'm just gonna quickly, I use my cutting board really quickly and this is just over, let's see, this is barely nine and a half. Um, this one's gonna be tight. We'll see if I use that one. But these should be 10 inches. These are from a, a layer, uh, yeah, um, excuse me, a stack of 10 inch squares. So these should be okay. Maybe I'll find a different one than this one. The problem is if they're too short or they're just right, you may not get exactly that nine and a half inches or whatever size block you want. So I'm gonna put this one aside. Let's see if I can find a different purple one. So here's another one. This is another 10 inch square. Uh, so this is fine. Let me just press this really quickly. All right, so this one is plenty long enough. Um, in fact, I may just cut it, trim it, uh, I don't trim them very exactly. Again, you'll see I'm not using a ruler or anything. Oops. And I have this nice new safety um, rotary cutter, which I love. So we're just gonna put that one aside, save that for later. You can always use some scraps. So this will be one of our strips. And then here, I'm just gonna slice up a couple of these. You'll notice I don't measure or anything. In fact, I don't even like them to be straight. I do like a little bit of play with those lines. I think that adds interest to the block. And we will set the way we might go ahead and cut some more since I'm going to be making a lot of these. I 
thin or thick. However you want to do this. This is such easy, no-brainer sewing. It's like you're a kid coloring again. And you know, sometimes it's fun to step away from a really uh, detailed pattern or, a, you know, a one that has a lot of measurements. It's fun to just play with the fabrics. At least I think so. That's, uh... <laughs> All right, so let's try with these strips then. So basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take two strips. Now, my one rule of thumb, and this is my rule. It doesn't have to be anybody else's. I don't like to have the same fabrics together. I mean, I have because I'm starting to run out of some of the colors. Like, you could put these two together, and one of the neat things is that seam will sort of... Uh, add a little bit of interest and make your make a sort of separate pattern too. So the seams are interesting too in, in this uh, kind of improv quilting. So I'm just going to start pairing these up and sewing them together and then I'll show you how we keep building on this. Again, this is about the easiest sewing you're ever going to do and the look is I think really striking. I will show you a picture of all the blocks I have at the end so far and you can really see how it comes together and how because we're doing stripe improv it really gives uh, a lot of movement to that to that pattern, or excuse me, to that the, the quilt blocks and then sewing them together. So I'm going to take these over the machine. I do use a quarter inch seam allowance, very simple sewing, and I'll probably pair up like three or four pairs of these and then we'll keep building on it. Okay, so here they are. I'm going to move my rotary cutter out of the way. I still have lots of strips left. You may need some more. Like I said, we sort of eyeball this and I'm going to make sure it's the right size. And then I'm going to press these all. Now, pressing guidelines for this, there really are none. I just usually press to one side because you're going to see when you start making all of these blocks, they're sort of all different uh, lengths and widths and... Um, All right, so I can already see that this is not going to be, uh, well, it might be. Let's see what we got here. We'll see. I'm going to try and sew these together. We, this might be just enough. You can see how they're not quite straight. That, that I think, adds a lot of interest to it. What we'll do is we're going to sew these three together. I may add one more strip to the end just to make sure I have enough coverage. Or you can do that once the whole block is sewn together. But we're just going to keep piecing these together. And... At this point, I will, hold on, let me lay that back out for you. At this point, I will sort of line up one edge. I don't worry about the edges that much, especially if I have longer pieces. Some of these pieces were pretty close to nine and a half. I think they were 10 inches. So when I'm sewing this, I will definitely line, line, let me do that this way. I'll line that up just along there just to make sure I have enough um, length in uh, this way to get that nine and a half inch square. So let me go ahead and sew those together. And one thing I don't think I mentioned was you want to place the fabrics right sides together. And again, just continuing with that quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so here is the block. It's not ready yet. We still have to trim it down and that's where the ruler comes in. Press that nicely. Let's hope this is the right size. And I just eyeball it right here. Ah, uh, no, we're gonna need to add one more strip on this end. See, that's why um, I always measure before I start cutting, whoops. So let's see, what should we use? Da, 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 da. What do you think, let's throw a polka dot on there? That's what I kinda like. But maybe a thicker one, just to be, just to be safe. There we go. All right, I'm gonna add this polka dot one. Actually, I might add it on this end. All right, I'm gonna add that there. See, this is all about the improv, just going with the flow. Now for this block, I have this, I love my big, it's a 15 inch ruler, 
And you're going to need, again, I decided on nine and a half inch uh, blocks. So you're going to find that nine and a half inch measurement. This has that gorgeous diagonal line. I don't need that right now. I always show that to you when I'm making half square triangles. <clears throat> but the first thing you want to do is even out one corner over here. So you want to make sure that from here to here it's longer or about nine and a half inches or I do it a little bit longer just so I have some wiggle room. We have a nice length this way. I can really play with the fabrics this way. In fact, I'm going to move my ruler down a little bit. And then I'm just going to trim it up. I might twist it a little bit. Sometimes if you have a really, if you have it longer this way, you can actually twist it a little bit. Just lots of fun. Okay, so I'm going to trim that up along the side and along the top. Just got it, and now I'm going to throw these out. Uh, if you're a real scrapper and you like those tiny scraps, hey, go for it. Keep them. They're gorgeous purples. Those Island Batik purples are so pretty. So then the next thing I'm going to do is rotate it around. So there's that cut corner we did earlier. And you're going to find, and there's a little bit of glare on here. Sorry, let me see if I can fix that. You're going to find your nine and a half inch point on that diagonal line. So there's your nine and a half, nine and a half. You're going to put that point, and I got to move this over because my I, when I'm doing these videos, I put a little <clears throat> pressing surface there. Very easy to do. You find that nine and a half inch point on the diagonal line, and then you're just going to line up that nine and a half inch measurement on the bottom and on the left side, and then you're ready to trim. So hold it down nice and firm. And there you have, let me move this out of the way. And there you have a very simple, and I think gorgeous, uh, improv quilt block just with strips. This is all with strips today. Uh, I just felt that was easy. I get a lot of strip sets when as an Island Batik ambassador and sometimes I have pieces left over or I just, you know, leftover binding, anything like that. I keep all my scraps. So this is my purple one. Uh, this is going in my stack. Like I said at the end, I'm going to show you all of the different colors I've done so far. And just for fun, we're going to make one more because it also gives me an excuse to make another block so I can finish up this quilt easier. So let's see, what color do I want? All right, I think that's enough to rummage through right now. Um, and that doesn't even make a dent in that box. Uh, this is why I need to do these projects. And uh, I'm guessing some of you do too. So here's another really pretty purple. Uh, and again, another one of my internal rules, it's again, not a rule you have to follow, but I like to keep them in the same family. So like that might be a little too uh, different in colors, whereas this and this might work better together, but I don't feel like doing purple since I just did purple with you. Uh, why don't we do blue? I always have a lot of blue scraps. So why don't we try this one? There's one. Oh, here's a pretty one left over. You have to make sure they're long enough. If they are not long enough, and I'll show you that too, we can pretend that some of these aren't long enough. This is a nice thin one, but hey, it, it works. I think those look nice together. See, now that's blue, but that's really light blue, so that I wouldn't use with this. What do you think we could use? That's doable. I may keep, sometimes I keep them out and then um, I revisit them later. Now that scrap's not going to work. You could piece together a long scrap. I'm not going to do that today. I will. Whoops. That's the same scrap. Let's see. Now we could go darker with it too. In that case then I think I would probably pull this one out. There we go. Now it's starting to... What is it? Now we're cooking with gas. Is that the phrase? The old phrase? <laughs> um, so let's see what else we have. Throw that in there. That might work. Oh, here's a nice, here's another dark one. Some leftover. There we go. I'll use that instead. I do like that one. Um, these are really thin, so you're going to need a lot of strips. But hey, that's what's so interesting about it. So we're going to keep that one out. And why don't we do... Let's 
see, I think that white pops to me a little bit. So here you're seeing my behind the scenes design process. I really do love playing with the fabric. Okay, I think that's good enough. I'm gonna put all these back in my box. See, like I said, it doesn't make a dent. All right, so the first thing, I'm really happy with that. It's fun, uh, this is really cool. Um, this is the first time I've ever done something like this with the monitor on and you can really see the colors. So now I'm gonna press these. to get them ready. Now this is a really long piece so I'm going to cut this. And press it nicely. Watch your fingers. You press All right, so my strips are pressed. Oh, I had two for this one. I didn't realize this was a double layer. I'm gonna move this so I don't burn my, my, move the iron a little bit so I don't burn my arm on it. That would not be good. And now I'm gonna just, now these are all really narrow, which is perfect. I don't need to trim these down at all, which I love. This one I'm gonna trim down just a little bit. I love the width, the different widths. I think that adds a lot of interest too. All right, and now we're ready to start piecing together. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And I'm gonna go ahead and piece the whole block together uh, so you can see it. And again, just not pairing up the same color next to each other. So before I get started, the one thing I noticed, this one is a little bit short. So I wanted to show you, I meant to show you that and I forgot about it. I wanna show you how to make that longer so it'll kind of even up with these longer pieces. So I'm gonna hunt for a, a small scrap to add to one end. And actually, that's where this little piece will come in handy. See, you never throw out those scraps. I keep all my scraps, even these little ones. These are cut from a machine. This is cut from the AccuQuilt Go. So uh, I'm just going to add that to one end really quickly and press that. I try to make it about the same width. So I'm going to do that really quickly and then uh, press it, and then we'll have strips that are long enough. All right, and now we're ready to go. So let me start sewing together some strips. So here it is, I think we are good size wise. Let me press this really quickly. You'll notice I don't always press. I sew them together and then press afterwards. Again, no fuss, no muss on this. All right, I'm gonna get my ruler. You can see this one is definitely not as straight, which I love. I just love that little sort of the, the quirkiness of these blocks. That's what really makes me smile. And I could look at quilts like this for hours just to look at the different fabrics and the different lines. Like look how nice and thin that strip is. But let me get my ruler and we're gonna go ahead and cut this down to nine and a half inches. And then I'm gonna zoom the camera out and you can see all of my blocks together. So one of the things I really like when I make these longer strips and also a little bit wider is I have a lot of play. I can move the ruler around a little bit so I don't get those exactly straight lines. You know, it's completely up to you. But this way, let's see, you have to make sure, of course, you're covering both ends. And I'm just going to maybe, I'm going to do it this way a little bit just for a little fun, a little something different. It's going to be a little... Not necessarily on the diagonal, not even close, but it's just a little different. All right, so making sure it's nine and a half inches long. You don't want to cut too much. I did that on one of the blocks and I will show you here in a minute. And then you are just, you know what, I just realized you cannot see that real well on the camera. 
Let me move it down a little bit. Let's see, let's try that again. Sorry about that. Can, I, I do take my time with these just because it's fun to play with them and you can sort of get a little bit of a different look. All right, now we're going to trim off this edge nice and even. Now, that's big enough. I'll probably keep that because uh, I'll be, I'm going to be making a lot of these blocks. And then we're going to rotate it around. And now we're going to find that nine and a half inch point, <coughs> excuse me, it is allergy season big time for me. I think it was last time I filmed this too. The spring and early summer are really bad for me in the fall. So you can sort of get an idea of when I'm <laughs> filming my videos. But anyway, nine and a half inches, I'm going to put that corner that we cut down to that nine and a half inches and then over to here. And now we're going to just trim it up. All right, again, I'm going to keep those. Those are nice strips. I can definitely use those. All right, and here is my next block. Isn't that pretty? I, I don't know which one I like better. Those blues are gorgeous. Uh, Island Batik just has the most glorious saturated colors. I, all Batiks are beautiful, but, but there's just, I don't know what it is about their colors. They're so pretty. And here's that one that you can see where I didn't have a long enough strip. No problem. I just added a little strip to it as a little bit of more interest. So I'm going to change the camera around a little bit. I'm going to show you all of the other blocks. Well, all right. So basically what I plan on doing, because I use strips for this, I'm just going to lay this out. You're probably not going to be able to see the whole thing. I'm going to alternate the, the direction of the strips. And I'll play around with the colors. This will take me a long time when I eventually get to this. I still have a lot more blocks to do. I'm just going to cover this up. Let's put a gold one here. And you can see now where I'm alternating. So these stripes are horizontal, these are vertical. And again, my sort of internal rule, which is no rule, which is basically no rule, but I won't put the same colors together. Let's put one of those pretty purple ones we did. That's, uh, that's a lot of blue. We'll do this green one. See, to me, I love this process. Let me move my machine a little bit. I just love that I could spend hours playing with these blocks and just playing with the colors. And I know not that's not everybody's favorite thing, but it's just to me, it's like I'm a kid again in my crayon box and I'm coloring. All right, so let's see, what do we want to put here? I have a blue and a purple. I think I'm gonna do a purple because we have some blue in it already and we're gonna twist it that way. And you can see how it's coming together and how it's really, look at those jewel tones. They just, oh, I don't know, they, I love them. <laughs> so there you go, there's sort of a sneak peek at what it's gonna look like. It's gonna be a lot bigger. I have a lot more scraps to go. I still have two more here. Um, and like I said, I'll have this up on a design wall or probably on my floor. I'll turn the TV on and I'll lay it out on the family room and just uh, play with this and then tell my whole family not to walk on it for a couple days because I like to revisit my quilts. But this is what it's looking like. These are those fun improv blocks. Here's the blue one we made. Alrighty, so what did you think about our little improv strip block uh, using batiks? You can use any fabrics you want. Always just remember when you're sewing them together to place right sides together. That's one reason I like doing this with batiks is I don't have to worry about that so much. So not only is it sort of you don't have to measure, you don't have to do anything. If you use batiks, you don't even have to worry about what side is what. Uh, it's some, some fabrics you can tell, but not all of them. Uh, but this is it. It's a great scrap buster, especially for all those strips you have left over. I know we all do, especially when we're cutting up, you know, finishing up a quilt and we're cutting up the binding and that sort of thing. So I do hope you give this project a try. If you do and you take some pictures, go ahead and join my Facebook group, Working Our Scraps Off. The link is in there, my description of the video. It's a really fun and active group where people post all kinds of scrappy fabric projects, some really beautiful work. It's always so inspiring and so fun to see. And if you have any ideas for uh, future products, projects uh, for working our scraps off, I would love it if you drop me a line in the comments. I always love getting comments and I do try to reply to all of them. 
Uh, I'd also love it if you'd hit that subscribe button. I always appreciate it when people do that. And there is a bell. If you hit that, you'll get a little notice every time I do post a new video. I do try to post weekly, so um, I do tips, tutorials, lots of free patterns like this, lots of big, bigger free patterns, that kind of thing. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you wouldn't mind. I really appreciate you spending some time with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.